Chris? He was here. Philip! Philip Cotter! I know it's a pretty big step. But I want us to live together. Well, I haven't said yes yet. It's... Well, it's just when I listen to my brain, I think maybe it's not such a good idea. But when I listen to my heart... That's not your heart talking, that's your hormones. I'm not saying not ever. I'm just saying not yet. Howdy. Hi. Morning. So, how'd your party end up? Good? Great. It was such a rage, eh, Stu? Yeah, totally over the top. I'm sorry I had to leave so early. No, that's cool. Did you meet Trish? Oh, that's right. She came late. It was embarrassing. She was all over me like a rash. Mm, lucky you. I spent the rest of the night at the clinic because of the train crash, you know. It was awful. Yeah, heard all about it. Gory, eh? Hey, I've got these tickets to the joint tonight. Great band, Splatter Monkey. Interested? Tonight? Yep. Oh, no, I can't. Sorry, I'm busy. Oh. Not Trish again? Trish? Oh, yeah, that's right. We're supposed to be doing something. Listen, I'd better go. I want to bludge some money off Mum. Tell Hono I won't be long. Hey. Who's Trish? Nick's imaginary friend, I presume. <sighs> Funny kid, isn't he? Where's Nick gone? No, he's gone to see his mum. He said to wait. So what am I going to do with these tickets? Ask Gina. Mm, she's already doing something. What about you? Me? I don't know. Don't look so scared. Come on. I won't bite, I promise. Don't believe it. <sighs> yeah, sure. Why not? Uh, Chris, I know you've got a busy weekend, but could you squeeze in a tonsillectomy? <sighs> Is it urgent? No, but the family want to take the kitty away on holiday next weekend, and they are friends of mine. <sighs> oh, I guess I can fit it in. But we're going to need an anaesthetist. Uh-oh. You both realise I'm casual. That means no obligation to work overtime. So what are you saying? You want extra money? It's not a question of money. I'm a popular girl. I've made other plans. Fine, don't worry about it. I'll explain it to the mother. Sorry I asked. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I said I don't mind. Claire, please. Any history? Asthma? No, purely routine. Well, if I take a short lunch, I suppose I can fit it in. Terrific. Problem solved. Fine. I appreciate the cooperation. Hell, you certainly wound him up. Maybe it's an early dip into male menopause. You got a boyfriend? Uh-huh. There you go. What's his name? Uh, Luke. He's a reporter. Lucky guy. Hey, you reckon you'll write a story about me? Sports hero fights injury. Battles for recovery. I'll mention it to him. Do you want me to read the sports section to you? Ian already did. Oh. Well, is there anything I can do for you? Yeah. Get me back on my feet and out of here. Way to go, man. Be positive. Uh, you know that's not likely aid. That's what they say. But who really knows? What did Dr. Warner say to you? Doctors don't know everything. Uh, but did he tell you what goes on from here? Rehabilitation counselling in there? Yeah, yeah. But I should come good. Check that article over there. Says this girl will never walk again. And now she's running marathons. Daddy, it's not the same. But it happens. I'll give you another rub in a while. Great chick. Yeah. Hey, listen, I was thinking. Do you want me to send a letter to your parents? I can write it down for you. I know. I'll do it when I feel better. Eddie, that's... Hey, save it. Grab that article. I'd like to hear it again. So then I made up a story about this girl that's crazy about me. But she didn't even seem to care. Woman, eh? 
You can never make them out. I reckon I should just forget about it. There's plenty more girls out there. Right. You wouldn't want them to miss out. Maybe Stuart will have better luck. Hey? With Kirsty. He's taking her out tonight. See a band, I think. Does that bother you? No, of course not. I'll just hear all do. I've already told him the facts. Oh, but did he listen to you? Did he really hear you? Well, of course there's going to be some kind of denial. Oh, look, admit it, Chris. You copped out. You've been waiting for him to be transferred to the spinal unit. Look, you can't put it off any longer. He needs to be told the truth. He really has no idea. He still thinks he's going to jog out of here. OK, I'll talk to him. I can't help feeling a bit resentful. You know, the way Daryl took Tom's side. But it's time now to let bygones be bygones. Good for you. We're having the first family dinner since Tom came home. I must say, I love having the kids round. Gets a bit quiet with just Stuart. Excuse me. So these are top priority. Doctor's orders. Have a nice day. Oh, Kirsty, you're late. Oh, sorry, Marge. Blame your son. He wouldn't stop talking. Son? Son? Which son? Oh, it's Stuart, isn't it? Mum can Where have you been? To the gym, no doubt. Out the house at Craker Dawn. Locked in your room at night. Anyone would think you're trying to avoid your father and me. Look, I've just come on my way to school to say I won't be until late tonight. Oh, Stuart, we're having a family dinner. Patrick's dropping by and Daryl and Diana are coming over. Well, they can eat my share. I'm going to see a band. Oh, who are you going with? Just me. And Kirsty. I know it's not going to be easy, but I can handle it. The damage is permanent, Eddie. No amount of therapy is going to change that. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But you mob are always stuffing things up. Check that article over there. I don't care what the article says, Eddie. It doesn't apply to you. There is no mistake. You're going to be a quadriplegic for the rest of your life. Crap. I'm going to walk. I'll show you all. You're not going to walk. You'll have no control over your bowel or your bladder. You won't be able to sit up or eat without assistance. You're going to need round-the-clock nursing, pressure area, care, physiotherapy. You'll be at constant risk of infection. These are the plain facts, Eddie, and you have to accept them because there's nothing more that can be done for you. I don't believe you. Eddie. Look at me. Look at me. There is no hope that you will ever regain the use of your arms or legs. None at all. Hello, you ready to go? Tell something. Check out that bungalow. Oh, darling, I'm sorry. Change of plans. Got a tonsillectomy in 20 minutes. Oh, damn. But don't let that stop you. Oh, if you like the house, I'm sure it'll be fine by me. No, no, I'll call the agent. Postpone. Maybe tomorrow. Whenever. Got time for lunch? Mm, I've already eaten. Why not take Meredith? Oh, no, I was just going to grab a sandwich. Don't be silly. Honey, I'd love to take you, wouldn't you, darling? Sure, why not? Well, I suppose. Good. That settles it, then. Off you go. Kirsty, I'm glad you're going out with Stuart tonight. Hmm? Oh, yeah, they're a great band. He's far too much in his own company, that boy. He's always been quiet, you know. I don't think he's ever had a steady girlfriend. Really? But he's just like boys of his own age, don't you think? Well, he's sweet, sensitive, thoughtful and caring. In other words, he's a total weirdo. What do you mean? <laughs> it's just a joke, Madge. Stuart's just a bit shy, that's all. I'll tell you what, I'll lodge a full report tomorrow morning, tell you how it all went. A piece of pervert or anything. That's not what I meant, Kirsty. And you know it. Lighten up, Madge. Stuart's a good kid. I promise I'll be gentle. Do you want anything from across the road? No, thank you very much. Heidi, hi. How goes it? Don't ask. Oh dear, oh dear. He should get more sleep. Or less. Hey, what's the story with you and Michael? I thought he was going to punch you out before. 
Oh, you know how it is. How what is? Just games, that's all. Games? Mm-hmm. Like doctors and doctors. Time for a tonsillectomy. See you in theatre. Oh, don't worry about it. It's just her way of clearing the air between us. Claire can be very grown up about these things. Oh, yes, very sophisticated. I just wish you hadn't told her. Or better still, it had never happened. <sighs> Carrie, what do you want I to... don't want to intrude. Oh, don't be silly. Come on. How's Andrew? Oh, he's good. I should drop by soon and pick up the rest of my stuff. You still haven't found anywhere permanent yet. No, but if my things are in the way... No, I didn't mean that. Actually, I want... Sorry to interrupt, guys. But I'm having a small collection for Eddie. His family are in Samoa. And I want to help pay so his father can come over. Uh, I'll put in. <sighs> Sorry, that's all I've got on there. <laughs> Poor underpaid doctors. Put me in for 50. It's just a drop in the ocean compared to what it's going to cost in the long run. Well, at least he'll get a big insurance payout. Oh, eventually. It's important to him. He sends most of his wages back to Samoa. He needs to know that they're going to be looked after. I thought you liked Stuart giving you the extra coaching. Yeah, but I don't need it. My marks are heaps better. Then why not stick at it? Who knows? You might even... Mum, look at it this way. You'll save bulk money. I don't care about the money. Well, great. You can up my pocket money, eh? Look, I'd better get back to school. You and Stuart are still friends, aren't you? Yeah, of course. Hello. Goodbye. You after Michael? No. Uh, actually, I need some advice. A, uh, a woman's perspective, sort of. It's about Claire. Oh, Chris, I would have thought you had your hands full. Oh, no, 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 nothing like that. Oh, it's just... Uh, I had the strangest conversation with her earlier. Do you think she's serious about marrying Hone? Well, I just wish I could say I liked her as much as I like him. Well, that doesn't answer my question. Do you think she loves him? Who knows? She's certainly got a funny way of showing it. Well, that's what I thought. I've never met anyone who plays as many games as frightening. Well, the question is, do I say anything to Hone? You really want my woman's advice? Stay right out of it. They'll hate you if you're right, and they'll hate you if you're wrong. Believe me. Yeah. If you say so. They'll sort it out. One way or the other. Okay. Thanks. So, how was lunch? Fine. Fine. You mean enjoyable? Oh, poor Hone. I know he can be a bit stuffy, don't you think? Except in certain circumstances. But then you'd know all about that. I suppose he's no different than most men. Confident women frighten them, don't you think? Perhaps. So, how do you feel about Hone now? Sorry? Well, after your little fling and all that, do you still like him? Uh, we get on well professionally. Personally? Come on, don't be embarrassed. We're both adults. I know he's attracted to you. I was just wondering if the feeling was mutual. That's all. You're wrong. Quite wrong. There's nothing between Hone and me. Hey, I'm sorry. You're right. We shouldn't even discuss it. There's nothing to discuss. Exactly. I apologise, OK? Just a crass Australian. If you say you've got no feelings for Hone, then that's the end of it. Talking to Eddie, man, it really took it out of me. I mean, what do you say to a guy in that situation? Mm. It puts things into perspective. Makes our own problems seem pretty trivial in comparison. Uh, what problems? Oh, nothing much. I guess I'm getting a bit nervous, you know. About Claire? Mm -hmm. I mean, she's a wonderful person, and most of the time I can't believe how lucky I was to meet her. And then other times I just can't work her out. It's like we're still strangers. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. We're both independent people and I really like that, but... Yeah, but you are from two very different backgrounds. Right. Yeah, and temperamentally, you're worlds apart. That's for sure. 
I can understand you having second thoughts, you know. I mean, it's better that they happen now than after you've said I do. Yeah, you're dead right. It's totally normal. You know, everyone must have premarital jitters. Well, well yeah, but maybe you know, there's something... There comes something... a time, Chris, when everyone must just take the plunge. And if it doesn't work out, well, that's the way it goes. Well, I know, but on the other hand... Gee, thanks, Chris. I really appreciate you talking to me like this. It's helped a lot. He's been doing so well at school lately. Now, suddenly, he doesn't want Stuart to help him anymore. Oh, that'll be because of Kirsty. Kirsty? Haven't you heard? She and Stuart are going out together. It's quite serious by the sounds of it. I should have known there was more to it. Oh, teenagers. They take everything so seriously. Of course, I remember the time when I was... Stuart and Nick fell out. They've become such good friends. Well, you can hardly blame Kirsty for that. Because Stuart's much more mature. Well, he's older. Yes. And Nick is very young for his age. Poor kid. Oi, Harrison, what's the story? Hey, what am I, invisible or something? Well, at least tell me what I've done wrong. I suppose you think you're pretty good going out with Kirsty. <laughs> so that's it. Jeez, you can be so naive. I'm going to see a band with her, that's all. Besides, she asked you first. That's beside remember? the point. Oh, yeah, and what about your friend Trish? Huh? The one's hot for your oh, ha. I just didn't want Kirsty to think I was still keen on her. But you are, right? Yeah, well, I can't help it. Listen, mate, me and Kirsty are just good friends. Why don't you come tonight? I mean, sure we could swing another ticket. Nah. Splattered monkey is strictly yesterday. Besides, Kirsty will give me a hard time if she thinks I'm hassling her. But you do believe me, eh? That I'm not with her. Yeah, I suppose. Kirsty's not that dumb. <laughs> oh, by the way, you're not coaching me up to school anymore. It was Mum's idea, huh? She can't afford it. Mm, bummer. Well, tell her if you get behind again, I'll give you a discount. Oh, well, fat chance. Study sucks. I tell you, man, I'd rather be raging. Oh, well, Claire's never been one to beat around the bush. That's what I like about her. But she virtually said that you and I were sleeping together. I'm sure that's not what she meant. Oh, yes, it was. Look, I don't know about you, but I find it really uncomfortable working with someone under these circumstances. OK, OK, look, if you're worried about it, I'll have a word with her. Thank you. Like right now. Well, hi there. Well, bye there. Sorry to break up your little tete-a-tete. -tete. Oh, we were just talking. About you, actually. What? Meredith's kind of upset over a conversation you two had. What about? Well, she seems to think that you gave the impression that she and I were more than just good friends. You're kidding. All I asked was what you two had for lunch. Boy, she must be feeling really paranoid. Either that or it's wishful thinking. But you do believe her, don't you? There's nothing between us. Of course. But it's no wonder the females round here are after you. <laughs> Great buns. <laughs> Oh, I don't know if I can wait till we get home tonight. Oh, another feeling. <laughs> mm. Jackie. I'll take over for a while. Oh, look, I can't get him interested in anything. He won't even talk to me. Well, what to expect? He's not going to come to terms with this condition right away. These things take time. Yeah, I know, but... I just wish there was something that I could do. Off you go. Sit in at reception. Oh, Miss Burton, I'd like Jackie, to... Jackie, I understand your concern, but you mustn't let yourself get too involved. You can come back later. Yo, yo. It's your cousin here with a bit of cheer. <laughs> I can't drink on duty, but that's no reason why you can't suck on a light lager. Time to party, Mr. Tarly. Idiot, it's me, man. I've got eyes. So you don't want to drink? I'll put it in for later. Cut it out, will you? What? Being so bloody cheerful, <laughs> it won't help. Chill out, man. If I'm cheerful, I'm not going to hide it. You don't expect me to join in. Sam, maybe later. <laughs> yeah, sure. Harbour views, two bedrooms, it's a good area. Sounds great. We'll look at it on our way home. Mm, sure. But um, not for too long, darling. Got other plans. Oh, Michael. 
Just leaving. Mm, same here. Oh, Michael, I'm sorry I was grumpy earlier. You're right to be angry with me. Don't worry. It all worked out. We're off house hunting. Oh, that's good. Best of luck. Thanks. When we find somewhere, you must come round for dinner. Yeah, love to. I'll make you one of my hot South American dishes. Set your bum on fire. Look forward to it. Hmm. How does that feel? It's a lot better than those electric razors, eh? Can you should leave me alone. Hi, Mum. What's for dinner? I'm starving. Spaghetti bolognese. Great. Nick, I know you told me you don't want any more coaching after school, but it'd be a shame to have your marks slip back again. How about if I find someone other than Stuart to help you? I'm doing OK. But you don't want your schoolwork to suffer just because you and Stuart have fallen Look, out. I was talking to Stuart today. He was pretty upset, you know. He kind of needs the money he gets for coaching me. <laughs> Maybe we should keep going. Well, if that's what you want. Yeah, sure, I'll call him. I'm really proud of you, Nick. Why? What have I done? The way you're coping with Kirsty and Stuart going out together. Shows a lot of maturity. Who told you? March, who else? A human database. She thought you might be feeling a bit resentful. Why? They're only going to see a dumb band. Well, as long as it's OK with you. I think it's quite sweet, really. Marge said Kirsty's the first steady girlfriend Stuart's had. But if you spoke to him today, you must have sorted it all out. Yeah, we did. And things are okay between you? Look, I couldn't care less. Stuart and Kirsty can do like. It doesn't bother me. with the help of your broadcasting fee so you can see more of New Zealand on air.